Hi guys, welcome to this tactical video. Uh, this is the first video I am doing on Forge World units for the Sisters of Battle Codex. Um, of course, this time I'm talking about the Sisters of Battle Repressor, which, for those who don't know, is a dedicated transport vehicle, uh, which you can take, of course, in Adeptus Sororitas Armies. And the actual rules entry for this can be found in Imperial Armor 2, second edition. Uh, there's been several um, variations of the rules for this over the years since it originally came out. And because of that, there's sometimes some confusion, but the, the latest, most up-to-date version is the one in Imperial Armor 2, second edition. So that's the one you want to be using. Okay, so uh, first thing to note is that... Um, Basically, repressors, you can't actually buy them anymore from Forge World, which is a shame, but just like the emulators, they kind of went out of stock. Apparently, the mold was broken or something, but who knows any legitimacy to that. Um, but yeah, they, they stopped selling them, and it doesn't look like they're coming back anytime soon, if at all. Um, so as a result, generally speaking, you'll want to convert your own. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of examples of this on the internet. Uh, that people have done. Um, so yeah, if you really want a repressor, um, go for it. Now of course you need to ensure that your opponents are willing to play with Forge World. Um, most places are by now, it's pretty much uh, accepted. Um, the repressor doesn't really break anything, it's not like one of those OP units you see. However, having said that, it is still very good, as we'll soon find out. So um, that's most of the stuff out of the way to start with, so let's get into this. Okay, so the Repressor costs 75 points, and it's kind of like if the Exorcist, the Immolator, and the Rhino all had a baby. I know you can't make babies like that usually with three different parents, but this is what happens. Um, basically, the Repressor is exactly the same as a Rhino, except it has a front armor 13. Um, where it's slightly better than the Rhino is that um, basically it comes with a free dozer blade um, it has a slightly worse storm bolter in that it, can, it can't fire the full 360 degrees like storm bolter otherwise however it does have a heavy flamer as well so you're getting that bonus that crossover there of course it's got um, transport capacity 10 um, because of smoke launcher as standard uh, has shield of faith of course uh, which means it's got adamantium will and a 6 up invulnerable save um, but the, the main thing you get from it is that armor 13 on the front and the fact it has several um, firing points, which is really cool. So basically, uh, you have the usual fire point on the top, which is where two models can fire from. This is exactly the same as a Rhino. Uh, you can fire any uh, weapon out there. Now, along the sides, there's three firing ports on each side, kind of like an Imperial Guard Chimera. Okay. Um, each one of these fire points can be fired out from a single passenger. Now in previous rules, they had it where you could only fire normal bolters out there. You couldn't fire special weapons or heavy weapons or anything like that. That's gone now. You can fire whatever you want out there. So essentially, if you have an enemy unit on one side of you, you can fire five weapons out of that uh, repressor, including the repressor's weapons, without any of the troops having to get out. Now you can see this is a huge benefit to people who run small units of five sisters, for example, um, because they can shoot out quite easily. Um, they don't have to get out, um, you know. But again, you'd have to kind of pick your targets carefully because even though the repressor has a front armor of thirteen, uh, that doesn't stop it from being weak on the side. It's still only armor eleven on the side and ten on the rear, so if you're driving into the enemy like that, you've got to be careful, because obviously you need to be side on to be able to shoot at the fire points anyway. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So you have to basically be careful, make sure whatever you're doing that to um, will either take enough damage that they can't retaliate, or will have a hard time dealing with armor 10 if they charge you and that kind of thing. So this is something to be aware of. But um, the good thing about this is you can actually shoot out of both sides at once, technically. Now, obviously, you have to shoot at the same target. However, uh, there are ways of doing this. For instance, you could tank shock um, right through the middle of a unit, um, make them move to the side, uh, like parting of the sea, and then you can shoot at both sides. Of course, you'd be snapshotting then, so not so good, but you know that's that's a possibility. 
Um, the other way is that simply there is a slight gap in the enemy unit. You could drive forward, shoot out on both sides, and if it's the same unit, you can hit them with everything. But generally speaking, that's not going to happen, and you're going to have to get out if you want a full amount of firepower like that. Um, where the real strength for this comes from, for me personally, is the fact it is 10 transport capacity. So, uh, just like the Rhino, we've finally got something that can transport full squads, um, depending on what it is you want which is nice. Um, as you can imagine this is really good for Dominions uh, in full squads because um, they can shoot straight out the tank itself at enemy tanks without having to get out and of course the Repressor itself can burn them with the Heavy Flamer. Uh, if you blow up a transport for instance the uh, Flamer can deal with the occupants so it's it's kind of like a mobile bunker and you know there's a, there's a lot of ways it can be used. Now the real questions are, um, what what's the drawbacks of this? Basically, uh, a slight drawback now is that it doesn't come with a searchlight as standard, which costs one point. Um, for me, that wouldn't be so much of a problem. Uh, you could take a hunter kill the missile as well, but meh. Um, and extra armor for only ten points again, not really worth it. Uh, the only upgrade I usually get, <coughs> pardon me, is the dozer blade, which of course. Um, you can have that now. I believe there was an FAQ which meant you could take a loud hailer on the repressor. However, I I would have to double check that. So, uh, as standard in the book, you cannot do that. Um, but I'm pretty sure there was an FAQ which I'd have to dig up at some point. Um, so there you go. Um, yeah, the only upgrade I'd usually take is the Doze Blade. It's already there for free, so that's nice. So, if you if you remove that kind of from the cost, then it's really 70 points for a Rhino with um, six extra models that can shoot out of it. Front armor 13 and a heavy flamer on top which I think is really really good. Um, obviously it helps when you're tank shocking or ramming. Uh, you're more likely to do damage and not get hurt yourself. Um, it's much more versatile for whatever you want to put in but it's a higher points commitment because uh, basically it's 10 points more than an emulator but you get a lot of options. Uh, what you do lose is the specific uh, firepower that you would get from the emulator. So what do, what do I mean? Um, so for instance, uh, I like to run my Dominion squads with four melter guns like most people. Um, I like to run them uh, in a multi-melter emulator because uh, then I can shoot two targets at once instead of just one um, when they come on or I can add that multi-melter to the firepower if needed. Um, you know, make sure I kill that tank. Uh, you got a slightly longer range um, with it twin linked I've got more chance of hitting and stuff which is usually the biggest problem with Melter um, <coughs> excuse me so those kind of things really help um, it's a more specified firepower for instance if I took the heavy flamer emulator on a different type of squad um, having that twin linked flamer is going to mean it's doing more damage than the single flamer okay over the course of a single turn now obviously it's weaker in other ways but I'm just talking about the purpose you need the vehicle for Okay, now my Dominion squad's only five troops anyway, and if they get out, then that's two targets the enemy has to shoot at rather than just one. So I'm quite happy to do that. I don't need the extra transport capacity, so I don't need to spend that extra 10 points. It, it doesn't benefit me enough uh, over the sheer firepower. Now, if I was taking regular sisters, this is a completely different story because you get a lot more for your points and I would much rather take one of these with regular sisters uh, than the emulator. Now the problem is of course if you have uh, 10 models in the units then obviously you're going to want a larger capacity so the emulator is out of the question and then it really becomes a comparison between the Rhino and the Repressor. Um, now again I always put a dose blade on every vehicle that's saved my that's basically saved my units so many times it's, it's got to happen. Um, best upgrade you can get for a vehicle in my opinion. But uh, the point being it's still a 30 point difference and that's almost the cost of another Rhino. Uh, you can get a priest with melter bombs for that. Uh, you could get free combi weapons for that. Um, and it's the same kind of role. And basically what you need to ask yourself is um, is that armor 13 on one side and those firing points really going to make enough of a difference 
over the course of a few turns, because remember there's only a few turns per game over a Rhino to warrant that 30 points. And there's been times where I have had the, well, 60 points because two squad, um, 60 points spare where I was like, yep, there's nothing else I want to spend it on upgrade to repressors and then that's fine you know you got those points and again upgrading to repressors is quite high up the priority list for me in terms of spending those leftover points and things but of course once you start getting to the 60 point level you're getting to the point where you can afford extra squads um so if you have many more points free than that then it starts to become a thing well would i be better off just having another squad of sisters or a squad of dominions or something like that you know um, over just beefing up one side of this vehicle and you know adding an extra heavy flame there is there's a lot more options so you kind of have to go down the list and determine what it is you need first before you can afford the luxuries like this so to speak but again um, if you are having issues where you're getting shot a lot with anti-tank weapons um, at long range that kind of thing uh, I think you'd find the repressor will help you in a many, many ways. Uh, just drive it up the field as fast as possible, basically. Treat it the exact same as a Rhino. If it survives, brilliant. Um, it's more likely to survive. If it doesn't survive, well, you know, tough luck. It's it's 75 points. It's not that bad. And, you know, it's a, it's a threat. And it's very good combined with multiple exorcists, which is why repressors are quite popular usually, because you have that wall of armor for value 13, uh, pushing forward so you know you can get a lot out of it um, but yeah that, that's basically it really uh, so you have to really look at your army as it is if you're already using rhino transports perhaps it's not worth upgrading them if you have something you desperately need to protect then the repressor can help you with that so yeah, it's, it's really your kind of call. If you're struggling, as I say, to keep your rhinos alive, then consider playing the repressors a couple of times. Just proxy them for a while with a regular rhino. See, see how you get on. And, um, yeah, you might have more luck on that sense. Um, now, one last thing I was going to say is that, of course, in 7th edition, uh, and with things the way they are, um, there's nothing really stopping you from taking a repressor and you know adding it into any imperial army as a transport um this is particularly good uh obviously you can't take it as like a fast attack choice but you could take it for another unit and then put a different unit inside but um yeah this could actually be quite useful for some armies um especially things like imperial guard that kind of thing they could do very well with this it's stronger than the chimera at the end of the day um excuse me but even certain uh, space marine units like a command squad in this thing is going to be a nightmare for a lot of people to deal with um especially if it's a flame one so you know uh so yeah basically this the repressor is a nice little vehicle uh as i say you can't really get them anymore but uh perhaps there are recasters out there still who are still have the molds that you made or perhaps you know you can just convert one it's not that difficult really you just need a dozer blade on a rhino a bit of plastic card and uh bit of uh, time and effort really and you'll get there so um that's it for this video um if you liked it remember to click like uh if you have any questions or you know you agree or disagree feel free to post below and i will get back to you as soon as possible um and of course i'm still taking requests for videos so you know if you have anything you want to see or a video on or of anything at all then you know let me know either in the comments or just pm me or email me and of course, subscribe for more videos like this and other things in the future. So thanks for watching. See you next time.